Howdy folks, and this episode of Star Wars Lore is on the U-Wing. The UT-60D U-Wing Starfighter support craft, also known as just the U-Wing, was a transport-slash-gunship model manufactured by Incom Corporation and used by the Alliance to restore the Republic during the Galactic Civil War. Used to drop troops into battle and provide cover fire for them, U-Wings were pivotal in transport and protection of the Rebel Alliance's ground forces during the Battle of Scarif. Uh, U-Wings were manufactured by Incom Corporation. Their two uh, wing-like strike foils, or S-foils, were retractable and could be positioned facing fo- uh, forward-facing or backward-facing, depending on the situation. The movement of the S-foils was controlled by the S-foil articulation servo motor assembly. And the backward facing or flight configuration was used in combat situations as it increased the coverage envelope of the ship's deflector shields and, help, and helped radiate excess heat from the engine's core. Uh, the increased wingspan, however, was often turned into an obstacle by rough atmospheric conditions, resulting in the flight configuration primarily being reserved for high altitude and interstellar operations. U wings were armed with a pair of fixed position Tamenbach. KX-7 laser cannons, which are powerful enough to penetrate the shielding and hull armor of an acquittance class like cruiser. Since its primary weapons required the use of the ship's orient- orientation for targeting, one or both of the loading doors were transformed into gun ports with the mounting of improvised weapons. Therefore, any infantry-based heavy weapon could be mounted to become part of the craft's loadout. The Rebel Alliance opted to not equip permanent side-firing modifications so to not lose this versatility. Uh, One such example of these heavy weapons was the M45 Repeating Ion Blaster. Atmospheric speeds of up to 950km an hour were made possible by four 4 j 4 fusual thrust engines attached next to the fuselage. Hyperspace was achieved by four Incom GBK585 hyperdrive motivators with one mounted in each engine housing. Travel through hyperspace was often limited due to fuel requirements as crew life support requirements would greatly increase the fuel demands beyond efficiency. A two-seated cockpit was located in the center of the fuselage with viewports above and below. Uh, U-wings were unusual in the fact that they were equipped with tandem controls. Now this allowed the craft to be operated by a single pilot or by a flight team of two. The standardized controls featured across many Incom Corporation designs are present on U-Wings. Now, the U-Wing shielding, armor, and hold full of passengers led the craft to handle more like a heavy repulsor craft than a swift space superiority vessel. The older model U-Wing lacked S-foils and had two engines instead of the four that the newer models would go on to possess. Uh, a civilian version existed in the BT-45D, but was not of use in combat situations as it was stripped of all its military, offensive and defense applications, as well as its hyperdrive. Now, the UT-60D, or U-Wing, was one of the last ships to be produced by Incom Corporation before it was nationalized by the Galactic Empire. Now, due to this, the U-Wing never enjoyed a full production run. run. A lost shipment of U-Wings ended up in the hand of the Rebel Alliance after the careful manipulation of Senate records by Bail Organa. The rarity of the craft made them all the more valuable to the Rebel cause. In 1 BBY, or one year before Battle of Yavin, Saw Guerrero's partisans had a U-Wing painted in their specific markings. Saw and Adrio, or two tubes, took it to destroy a relay station on Jalindi and ended up rescuing members of the Spectres after their own mission went awry. They later went to Fail Station to infiltrate Freighter 2716, and Edra trailed after the freighter and recovered Guerrero before the freighter's Kyber Crystal um, car- cargo exploded. Uh, at the same time, the Lothal Resistance under Ryder Azadi had possession of an older model U-Wing, which had less engines than its newer counterpart, and did not have a working hyperdrive. Now, when the Spectres returned to Lothal, Azadi transported them to discover information on the Tide D Defender Elite. Later, Harrison Duller used Azadi's U-Wing, now equipped with a functional hyperdrive salvaged from the TIE Defender Elite, to escape Lothal and give the TIE Defender Elite flight data recorder to Alliance High Command. And based on the information, the Alliance decided to attack the Imperial Armory Complex which was producing the TIE Defenders. And for all of you who have actually watched Rebels, we all know how that went. Um, yeah, that attack originally failed. 
<laughs> now, around 0 BBY, or 0 years before Battle of Yavin, the U-Wing Bravo 1 took part in the extraction of Jin Erso from a labor camp on the planet of Wabani. Bravo 1, piloted by the former Imperial security droid K2SO, experienced technical difficulties and was unable to jump to hyperspace after the successful liberation of Urso by extraction team Bravo. So the U-Wing then sought refuge in an asteroid belt in the Wabani system to conduct repairs and request assistance from the Alliance fleet. The X-Wing squadron Red Flight came to Bravo 1's assistance and attempted to escort it to the CR-90 Corvette Vigilant. The rendezvous, the rendezvous was interrupted by the arrival of an Imperial 1 class Star Destroyer and the destruction of the Vigilant. A Bravo 1 was then caught in the Star Destroyer's tractor beam and subsequently freed by Red, Red Flight's assault on the Imperial Starship. With repairs complete, Bravo 1 and Red Flight leapt to hyperspace to rejoin the Alliance fleet. Then Bravo 1 returned to Base 1 on Yevon 4 to deliver Ursa to Mon Mothma and General David Straven. And then that same U Wing took them. Um, took them to the moon Jetta and then proceeded to rescue them from the same moon as well after the Death Star uh, fired at Jetta City and then that and then it took them to um, Iru as well and as we all know crash landed there and got abandoned and left there as they took an Imperial shuttle or cargo ship away um, to leave the planet now the rest of uh, the Rebel Alliance's U-Wings of Blue Squadron as well as the rest of Base One Starfighters, were then scrambled after the Rebel Alliance learned of the Rogue One Squad's um, infiltration of the Citadel Tower on Scarif. Now, Blue Squadron emerged from hyperspace along with the Alliance fleet led by Admiral Radis and headed towards the Shield Gate, and at least one U Wing made it through with an, es with an escort of X Wings past the Shield. Uh, a U Wing piloted by uh, Laren Joma and Taslet Kolb provided air cover by four Rebel forces already on the ground, and the U, U Wing's door gunner. Piston unleashed a volley of laser fire upon an ATACT ACT, disabling it. Ewing then descended to the surface and delivered some ground reinforcements to the battered rebel units. And eventually, the Imperial air defenses um, proved too much, and Ewing was shot down, resulting in the death of all who remained aboard, along with a number of stormtroopers who were caught in the crash zone. And the rebels' overall mission was a success, however, as his Death Star's plans were captured by the rebellion. Uh, during the Battle of Yavin, one was actually present in the hangar of Base One, one of the few ships still available after the heavy losses at Scarif. Now, one also one U-wing was delivered. Uh, sorry, one U-wing delivered the captured Inferno squad member Iden Versio to the security cruiser Invincible Faith, although the, although it was a ruse to delete critical intel. Now, the gunships also saw action during the pivotal Battle of Endor. They were deployed to the moon of Endor to secure Imperial assets right after the destruction of the Death Star 2. And shortly afterward, three of them attempted to board the Dauntless at Fondor. Although they were shot down by Inferno Squad, at least one U-Wing was also used to land reinforcements at Naboo during the ground stages of the battle during Operation Cinder. And U-Wings also saw action during the Battle of Jakku as a part of the New Republic Starfleet with at least one deploying New Republic Special Forces during the battle. Uh, it was nearly shot down by a homing rocket, but John Barrel intercepted the missile with his own body by flying out of the, by flying out of the ship with a jetpack, saving the Ewing and its occupants at the cost of his own life. And that is actually a brutal, <laughs> what a way to go. Wow. Anyway, and that is the Ewing. So if you like the video, be sure to drop a like, uh, subscribe if you're new, keep up to date uh, Click the notifications button to stay up to date with all my latest videos as well, and I will talk to you all in the next one. Later.